Members of the company, this is your places call. Places, please. Places for the top of the podcast. Places, please. Get ready for a behind-the-scenes look at the glitz and not-so-glam of Broadway, education, and everyday life with Uncommon Sense. Join hosts Christopher Smith and Sharna Lopez as they bring you the best stories and shenanigans that seemingly prove how elusive common sense can really be. So take a little time for yourself to hang out with the dynamic duo Sharnifer. And no leaving early, because you might just miss that 11 o'clock number. Stand by music. Music. Go. Uncommon sense The eleven o'clock And we are Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you guys. Christopher literally dropped a bomb right before he hit record that was like, I'm going to tell you a fun fact. 54321 podcast. Here we go. Hello, Sharno fans. I think I know what it is. I think I know what it is. Well, I, I would be shocked if you knew what it was, but I'm ready for it. Tell me what it is. Joy's pregnant. Absolutely not. You froze. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, <honestly. gasps> Absolutely it? not. It is not that life altering. It is just simply oh. that, and I decided to share it on the air because our Sharno fans might want to hear as well. That we have broken okay. 10,000 downloads. <gasps> Come on. Yeah. That's why I have a glass of wine. Woohoo. Cheers. Cheers. Bunk. Cheers to that, guys. In my Starbucks. Cheers. Cup. Bing. Bing. Bunk. Starbucks sponsor Starbucks. us. We broke 10,000 <gasps> episodes. Wait, that's a Starbucks or any rose wine or glassware or whoever wants to come in here. Yeah. Charno fans will support you. We will. Wait, that's awesome. Yeah. 10,000 downloads? Yes. More than now. That's not a small number, Christopher. It is I'm not proud of tiny us. at all. Yay us, yay us. So, Sharna, I don't even know. I mean, know, but... not life-changing, but also pretty exciting. Yeah, totally. We're here for it. We're here for it. I like it. You're so big on my screen right it? now. Normally, I have you small. Why? Well, because you're like full screen. Oh. And I normally have you small. I'm dominating today. Well. <laughs> but you know why I feel like that is? Is because we really haven't, so Sharno fans, this is not a surprise to anyone, but we had to bust out a bunch of episodes the last time Christopher and I met because I was traveling the whole month of June, like the whole month of June. Like, literally. And so we did a bunch and we haven't seen each other on our podcast technically in a while. Yeah. Even though we've been releasing episodes. So this is a fun little reunion. Here we are. For Sharnifer. Which... Brings me to our point of this episode. It's the welcome back, Sharna, from your world travels episode. So, yes. <laughs> oh, I should have worn like my Paris hat or something. Boom. Oh, <gasps> I should go get my beret and put on my beret. No, we'll hold. We'll hold. I mean, it looks super cute with my pigtails. <laughs> Super cute. Come on now, Beret. We'll put it on the Insta. All right. If you can't see me, I'm wearing a pink lace beret that I wore in Paris. And my seniors bought this for me this year. Oh, that's fun. It's like a little go have a fun travel. Yeah, they were, dude, my senior class. So they got me this little cute beret and they gave me like an envelope full of euro to like spend. That's so cool. In Europe. I know. It was very sweet. So I wore this one day a little to like a little photo shoot, my little pink beret. <laughs> so great. If you're listening, it's really cute. <laughs> it's okay. We will put it on the Instagram, like I said, as long as I remember. This is our welcome back episode. It is. It's... I have a pink dress, a pink beret, and rosé. Oh. I feel like it's a theme. Perfect. And I have my like mm -hmm. blue shirt with my like aqua blue green Starbucks cup. So we're good. We had the we got the assignment down. We usually do. We usually do. 
So, Sharna. Winning. Where in the world did you go? I know we sort of touched on it before you left. Oh, my gosh. But we need not quite a blow by blow, but like an overview and some highlights, if you will, from your travels. In order, please. I mean, we got to start, though, with just the fact that in the month of June, I was in one, two, three, four different states and one, two, three, four four different countries. I was in four different states and four different countries in the month of June. I feel like that has to be a record, right? I mean, it's if not, it's definitely up there. Definitely up there. That's a lot. That's a lot. It's a lot. So just to the sort of like, I'd love to get in detail about some of the travels because yeah. I think some of it, especially my last part of it when we did like our educational travel, but we... In the beginning of June, right after graduation, we did um, Cooperstown in New York. So for any parents who are listening who have baseball players who are 12 years old, Cooperstown is like it. Cooperstown is the Broadway of baseball when you are 12. Um, and I can I can talk a little bit on that. But we were at Cooperstown, which is in New York, upstate New York. Okay. And then as a team, we did a side trip on the way home to Boston, which was also, I I would love to talk about Boston kind of, I think Boston and Chicago, Boston might be up there in one of my favorite cities, like city cities. Mm -hmm. Um, super cool. So we were there with a family and then came home from that trip. One day road trip to Santa Barbara to see my stepdaughter graduate. Congratulations. Alyssa graduated from UCSB, which was awesome. Um, any high schoolers who are looking at colleges, UCSB is a gorgeous school. Um, my stepdaughter had a great time there, really enjoyed her time there, had a really great, um, internship and then a job on campus that she really enjoyed. So I would highly recommend just from her experience that school, she really loved it. And then literally the next day I left with 40 high schoolers to go to France and Italy which was, I mean, I feel like I could do five podcasts and I could have like each teacher chaperone come on and talk to us about, (laughs) I had, I had five other teacher chaperones with me. Um, you can ask me a million questions. I'll tell you all really, really a a wonderful experience for myself, for the students, just in general. Mm -hmm. Um, we were in Paris and Florence and Rome. Um, and we flew through Ireland, which was cool. Um, like our layover was in Ireland. So even though we didn't tour Ireland, even just being in the airport in Ireland, like, you know, different people, different culture. It was, it yeah. was interesting. Did you count that as one of your and then four it came countries? Back. I did. Okay. Yeah, Good. I was there. I set foot and we actually set foot on the land because the airplanes in Ireland, you deplane out on the tarmac and Got you it. walk, you know, mm-hmm. um, which I always love that. I always feel like you're in like some old movie, like here I am getting off the airplane, That's like a fancy true. person walking on the tarmac. That's so true. I love it. Um, and then came back and went to Havasu for a few days with, uh, my daughter and my younger stepdaughter and some family friends, and then needed to take a nap for a week. So that was me in June. (laughs) But ask all the questions, Christopher, I'm going to put you in the reporter seat for this episode. What do you want to know? What do you, what are you intrigued about? Or what do you want to know more about? Cause I, you know me, I talk forever. Well, I think. What so where did you go first? You I mean outside of the US. Where like in your Europe trip, where the did first you start? Spot, so Paris. Okay. So we we had our layover in Dublin. Um which the layover was actually really great. Our last trip we took um to London, it was a straight flight. And when we had a layover schedule on this one, I was like, oh man, this is gonna be hard for the kids. It was actually really good because we got to get off the plane. The kids got to eat like a dinner. Um or lunch, as it were, sit and eat and kind of like, you know, get their wiggles out. And then we had the last little leg. Mm -hmm. Um, So we were in Paris for three days. Okay. Three nights. Um, Yeah, it was, um, have you, you have not been to Paris. I have not been to Europe, period, full stop. Um, Which is crazy. Honestly, okay, before we get into like details, my biggest takeaway, and I think I kind of told this to you a little bit when we had lunch the other day, but... I traveling is expensive, hands mm-hmm. down. Traveling internationally is insanely expensive, hands down, especially with your family or whatnot. 
I feel like every time I go, I'm, I'm more inclined to ensure that my kids see other cultures and see other countries and see other places. I just, it's so, it's, it's a, it's an experience. And I think traveling with students makes that even more so for me where I see these, these kids who are like just completely outside of their orange County bubble. Um, and it's a really, it's a really great learning experience for them. Some things that you're like, yeah, no, thanks. <laughs> Some things that you j- just like, a like a, like a moment of like acceptance that, oh, or, or understanding that there's more than what you know, or right. what's been given to you. Right. You know? So Paris definitely, Paris was a lot for the kids. We, we were like, go, go, go. That first day we walked 30,000 steps. That's like, that's a lot of steps. That's a lot. That is a lot of steps. Yeah. And in the heat, no. I mean, not excessive but heat, still, but it was warm. If yeah. anybody knows us, um, we know we love not the heat. <laughs> yeah. But I will say, for those of you who are, you know, don't like the heat like me, I survived. I was not ever terribly uncomfortable. Um, you know, I had my big diva fan and in in the subway was probably the worst where we get really sticky down there. Um but it it was doable. But yeah, that first day, I mean, we, when you do an educational trip, a tour, it, that's what it's focused on. Right. It's not focused on leisure, right. you know? So we had the kids all over the place, but dude, the, the, the architecture, the history, even if you're not a history person, I just think like, you feel like you've been taken back in time mm-hmm. and seeing you know, we went, it was even cool because we went to the East coast right before that uh, of America. And that's where a lot of our history is. Most of our history. Right? right. And then you go to Europe and you're like, hold up. America's like a baby. Yeah. Well, it is, you know, like, like, yeah. And, but I think as Americans, if you haven't traveled internationally, yeah. you only know that from a history book. And so seeing it and we did a lot of what they call whisper tours. Okay. Do you know I is? don't. Okay, so when we went to London two years ago, I whisper tours may have been a thing, but we didn't have any whisper tours. And it was one of my biggest pieces of feedback for the travel company was like, hey, we have 25 kids in a group and the tour guides at the front. If you are kid 15 or back, we don't know what the tour guide's saying, mm-hmm. even if everyone's quiet, yeah. you know, and we would always have a chaperone in the back. And so we would always be like, what just happened? We don't know what they're talking of about. Course. Right. So whisper tours, they give you a headset. Um, it's either over like an over ear or in ear and you connect it to this little necklace and you get on, it's like a little walkie talkie, right. And you get on the same channel. And then your tour guide has a microphone. They are talking literally this loud in the museum they're talking at but it's in your ear right so you as a group we would still split in two we'd have 20 and 20 but you could be at the other end of the room in the museum trying to find your way to the group or you could be standing at a different paint and you could still hear or you could be in the back of the pack looking at the giant beautiful you know tapestry or whatever and you could still hear so that we did four or five whisper tours. I really enjoyed that. And then they were, some of them were so good where they'd be like, now we're, we're going into the next building, please exit to the left. Like it didn't seem so chaotic right. trying to get all the kids, you know, yeah, to go. Um, well, I mean, we went in so many museums, our same museum was so beautiful in France, the Louvre, of course, the Louvre was like, um, it's so iconic. You get there and you're like, I've seen this in a million movies and I want to go in. I want to take all the pictures and then you get in and it's like, like you have to be there for three weeks. (laughs) It's, it's, I can't, I can't even explain the size of it. It's like, it's like, it's like a, it's like a palace, like a castle. Like there's no, there's no way. So our tour guide is really cool. And he was like, Hey, here are like the top four things people want to see. So you've got two go. hours and we like ran through to try and see the Mona Lisa, you know, the Venus de Milo, the, 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 the famous ones that people want to see. Yeah. Um, but, but it was just, it was massive. It was massive and hot. That was where I was hot. I found every air vent <laughs> that was in my that museum favorite. and 
stood over it like Marilyn Monroe. That was my favorite thing on Instagram was watching those pictures. My air vent, Mm -hmm. my air vent session. I mean, correct. You know me. I do. I get, I get overheated. Hey, I I would be the same way, except I mean, maybe I would wear a dress in that situation and maybe that's the choice. Well, and that was a big thing. (laughs) Like you get the airflow. Yeah. You know, and dressing, we'd wake up in the morning and be drizzling and like 68, but the humidity is so much that you're yeah. already like sweating. Um, umbrellas at all times, you know, but Paris, I was surprised. Um, I think in my mind, Paris was sort of like, not, I don't say not real, <laughs> but like I have sort of, I had sort of like a fake version of Paris in my right. mind. Well, I think most I, people probably London, do. I sort of had a. Yeah, I don't know, like, and I got there and I I did not think it was going to be such a big, bustling city. Mm-hmm. I was not ready for, like, the New York. It was like the European New York. Yeah. I wasn't ready for that. And so that sort of took me, um, it, it caught me off guard a little bit. Um, so. But it's, would you, it's beautiful. How would you compare that to London or New York? Like. So London. Oh, there goes the microphone. microphone. She's um, okay. We're all, London, we're all okay, everyone. No, we're good. We're good. You know, it's funny. London was also a big city, mm-hmm. but I didn't feel like it was as busy, bustling, crazy as Paris was. Hmm. It may have been, I mean, we were in London. We were in like the spots everyone goes, but, but I think that also might be my brain because I expected London to be busy and I wasn't expecting Paris to be like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I was a lot more mellow on this tour because I had done it. I had taken children to Europe. In London, we were like, everybody get in a straight line right behind your friend. Nobody, like, we were like uh, militant. Love. This one, I was like, we got everybody? Cool. Everybody, we're going to the next spot. Like, it was very, I was much more mellow. Um, So the kids were sort of walking with everybody and people. And whereas in London, we were like, straight line. London also closes up. So like London, like 10 p.m., London, they the bars close, the pubs close. Um, Paris is more of like a city city. Yeah. Um, That's kind of interesting, and, though. And the tourism is, man, I, I like I, I liken it to like New York. You know, you've got street vendors, you've got people trying to slang things on the street, give you bracelets, give you like. I was just picturing Paris like. All romantic and got the and accordion playing with their, yeah, yeah. So it's not that I didn't. I, I think it just wasn't what I was expecting. I think the Eiffel Tower is iconic. It's it's so impressive. Um, we stood we stood on it, and I was just like, wait, what? Like when you've seen something so many times in movies and pictures and whatever, yeah. and then being there hearing the history of it. Um, it was really, it was a very, very um, historical place to be. Yeah. Again, I don't know if I'd go vacation there. Maybe it would be different if I was on vacation and I wasn't, you know, leading a group of children, but the croissants, the, I mean, their to croissants are, I'll eat a hundred. <laughs> They're pace, like, you know, how we have Starbucks on every corner yeah. here. In America, they have bakeries on every corner and just the pastries. It's like people just eat them like it's like we drink Starbucks. Bonjour. Oh. Good day. Bonjour. How is your family? Marie, the baguettes. I mean, the bread. The baguette. Oh my yes. God. The croissant. Hurry up. Hurry up. So good. Put that croissant in my face. Um. So speaking very, very of food, good. what was your i know we haven't like gone through all your travels we just started in paris but i just want to ask food we're going to talk food for a minute what is your favorite food on your trip oh man so i think region wise italy 100 percent one for food um i had a pesto pasta in Mm -hmm. rome that i i don't 
it had small bits of love in it. I don't even know. Like it's the combination. It's not one thing. It's not the sauce. It's not the pasta. It's not the, you know, the fresh vegetables. Like for those of you who don't know me, I don't like tomatoes. I always ask for things with no tomatoes. Um, this dish came with like Roma tomatoes. I could have eaten just a bowl of Roma tomatoes. Like that's, it's just different. It, the food, it's just different. The food is different mm-hmm. there. Um, any of their cheese. Oh my gosh. The ricotta cheese. It's they, they serve a, at breakfast. It's like a tower. It, it looks like a, like a, like a mountain of well, cheese. Love, who doesn't love and a mountain like, of cheese? I mean, I saw it and I said, I was like, what is this? And the guy's like, you just take a slice of it. I'm like a slice, like like a, a, like a, like a, yeah. Like a slice of cheese. You like shave it off like a big slice. Okay. Olive oil, salt and pepper to your face. Sold to Sharna. (laughs) I, the food in Italy was very good. The gelato, we scouted out like the best gelato places and affogato was a big thing for us because we were dead tired but like we need mm-hmm. espresso and there's this spot where they do the gelato with the espresso inside and oh it was so good italy wins for food it's not that france wasn't good um i also think had i been able to venture out more maybe to find different foods but we had crepes which were delightful great but i don't know if like they're any different than a creperie here that you'd find, you know, Mm -hmm. I I don't, I can't really compare the croissants, the pastries in France and then the pasta and the meat. So Italy, everyone thinks pizza and pasta. And honestly, the pizza I had in Italy was fine. It was good, but it's not no American pizza. It was nothing to be like, God, this pizza. Yeah. Their paninis, their pasta, but like the meat that guy had a steak in in florence that was like and we had a tour guide telling us like when you're in rome eat carbonara and cacio pepe and pesto when you're in florence eat steaks like they are known for their steaks we're like okay you know so we had somebody kind of telling us regionally what was good to eat it was all delightful with the pizza i've heard that I knew that they were like basically margarita pizzas in Italy. It's not like our American pizzas. And I believe you also mentioned something about pepperoni and salami when we were talking. What what was the pepperoni and salami? I've got to, hopefully I got to get him to get like, maybe he'll come on our podcast. Hey, (gasps) maybe he will. Okay. Our tour guide's name was Andrea. Do you have his contact info? He... I mean, he probably would. He was a former actor and a former chef. So like the perfect combination of what we needed on this tour, right? Yeah. Like a total charismatic, um, and he's Italian. So he helped us in France. He was with us the whole way. But once we got to Italy, he was just like so into it. But he told us a story when he first started working in the kitchen um, in France, not in Italy. Okay. And they were like... Uh, the pepperoni pizza, or we'll put you're an Italian. We'll put you on the pizza the pizza station. And he's like, I have literally only been like washing dishes, you know, <laughs> like you can do it. You're Italian, and so like pepperoni pizza came up, and he was like, What is pepperoni pizza? Like in Italy, they do not call it pepperoni pizza, and they don't even have pepperoni. I was going to say, Do so they funny. even have it? Okay. I mean, not for pizza. Maybe they maybe they have it somewhere else, for but a panini, no, maybe. I mean, maybe. And so he's like, okay, like, I'm just going to do this. So he sliced up peppers and put them on a pizza. Like, and this like chef bell peppers? Was so pissed. Like, I think they were like bell peppers. Yeah. That's crazy. And he's like, what is this? And he's like, you said pepperoni. Like, these are peppers, you know? And he had to show him, like, no, you fool. This is pepperoni. <laughs> Slice it up, put it on. He's like, oh, you mean salami. So in Italy, they call it salamini pizza. And it doesn't, the, the meat doesn't look like our pepperonis. It's a thicker and they cut it. It's like, it's like slices of salami mm-hmm. and they cut it up. Now it's still very delicious. And some people will eat that pizza. Um, it's on the menu. Like it's, a, but most people just eat margarita pizza. Like that's, that's what they do. There's no like barbecue chicken pizza, 
caramelized onion basil pesto pizza. No, they left that for no, California it's... Pizza Kitchen. Okay. California. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm not mad about. I kind of like it's oh, like, but if but essentially it's American pizza. Yeah. It's like how when Jerry's like Taco Bell, like what? <laughs> like people can love Taco Bell, but it is not Mexican food. No. You know what I mean? And and that's fine. We've Americanized that version of food and I'm here for it. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I love me like a good Hawaiian pizza or like meat lovers pizza mm -hmm. all day. But Tasty. in Italy, margarita pizza, which so, was delightful. And yeah. there's their um, crust is thinner. Oh, so it's more like just the general thin crust. Maybe yeah. as we would call it here in America. Not, not a lot of dough, not a lot of bread. Yeah. Oh, but it's so good. So I know you sort of cheese and their sauce. It's all fresh. <laughs> So delicious. She's like back there remembering, mm -hmm. tasting it as we speak. Um, yes. The I was I know you touched on that your tour guide sort of said in this city, eat this type of thing in this city, eat this type of thing. But how did you find good places to eat as you went along? Or did you just be like, hey, there's a restaurant. This is where we're going because it's near the hotel. So every breakfast was included at the hotel. So we would all eat breakfast together at the hotel and you just ate what was there. And most of the breakfasts there are continental breakfasts. So it was like dessert for breakfast, you know. Of course. Chocolate croissants, croissants, toast, jelly, um, yogurt. But they also do what we would call like cold cuts or charcuterie for breakfast, which is hilarious. The that kids are like, funny. wait, what? Like ham and salami and cheese. They'd always okay. have like cut up brie cheese. Um, and then dinners were also provided so those restaurants were already chosen ahead of time and the okay. menu was already set up but lunches were when we had free time and so that was like we literally would be like okay we have an hour we gotta go and we would just go and sort of like judge something by the front of the building and look at the menu and be like we're gonna go in and we got lucky i mean every lunch we had a couple lunches where we had salads that were actually really, really good. Um, again, in Rome, we really wanted to have carbonara mm -hmm. and cacio pepe. Like we wanted to make sure we had those ones. So we're like, does this place have that? Um, but it was more for like the ambiance. And in Europe, very similar to New York, if anyone has been to New York who's listening, you walk down any street in Manhattan and you see the front of restaurants that are this big. They have a tiny little door. You walk down little stairs, tiny little door, and you're like, oh, it's like this cute little hole in the wall. And then you walk in and it's somehow a cavernous giant restaurant. And it's the exact same thing in Europe. So it's all these little cobblestone streets with these tiny little storefronts. And you're like, oh my gosh, are we going to fit in there? Are they going to yeah. be able to seat us? And then you walk in and it's like a welcome palace. to the, you know, 700 seat. Yeah, it's crazy. Um. So we sort of just like whatever was close by that we knew we could get in and we had good luck. We had really great luck. We found this one spot in Florence. We we're walking by and Kristen Skoglin, who was on the tour with us, was like, you guys, look at this. And down an alleyway, there were these like um, lanterns hanging with like vines and there was a table. And we're like, what is down there? And we happened upon some local hangout. Like there were no yes. tourists back there. We walked in and we were like, we got backpacks. We got water <laughs> bottles. I'm like, we do not belong here. We do not belong here. <laughs> um, and we sat down and I was like, but this is so awesome. And we like got charcuterie and it was like a cool spot. It was just, there's so many places in the cities we were in to eat. I mean, it's like New York. Mm -hmm. You're just walking down the street unless you're, going into a McDonald's or an Applebee's, you're, you're doing okay. You know? Yeah. I mean, you can still yeah. go in the McDonald's was, or the Applebee's. That's okay. Ugh, no McDonald's. The kids <laughs> kept saying, can we get McDonald's? I was like, no, <laughs> go get McDonald's when I'm not looking at you because yeah. it's embarrassing. Because we are, the kids had a hard McDonald's time. Some of the students had a really hard time with the food, with the food. And it, again, I don't know if my kids would have loved all of the food from those countries, but it's so good for them to realize not everybody eats how we eat and we can't always have exactly what we want, you know, when we want yeah. it. We'll see how I would do. I'm sure I would do great. I love food. So yeah. And new trying foods. new things, you yeah, know, absolutely. You were there when I ordered the other day, I was like, let's try this. Let's try this. This looks delicious. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's just 
trying it and being okay with like, tried that, don't like it, tried this. Like in Florence, there was a very specific sandwich that the tour guide told us to get called a porchetta. And it's like Mm -hmm. the pig they roast whole and then they shave it off and there's different kinds. And each of us, there was four of us that went to go get lunch and each of us got a different one. So we could like all try it and see, you know, and there was one where we were like, oh, this one's the best. No, one's okay. This one wasn't good. You know, you got to figure out what you like. Yeah. It's like, Absolutely. Advent- it's adventurous for sure. So when you were in all these wonderful cultural places, were there any like cultural events or festivals or anything that you did in any of these places? Or was everything just sort of like guided tours of exciting things? We had total guided tours, but when we went to the Vatican, they were setting up for something like the Pope was going to come out either later that day or the next day. So the whole St. Petersburg square, not Petersburg, not St. Petersburg, St. Peter's (laughs) that is in Russia. My bad. Didn't go to Russia. Um, St. Peter's square was full of chairs, which was kind of crazy. So like we went in the Vatican, came out the Vatican and went into St. Peter's Basilica. And like on that little walk, you're just like, what? There's just like thousands of chairs set up for people who are going to come out to see the Pope. Um, We weren't there for that, but they were setting up for that. And then in Paris, it wasn't cultural, but they're setting up for the Olympics. So, you know, they had the rings hung on the Eiffel tower and you could see like they're setting up for the volleyball courts underneath and the different soccer fields and the different things. Like they were setting up the Olympics, which is kind of cool. Um, On our final night in Rome at dinner, they had a singer and an accordion player come and like sing and they got the kids up to dance and like they were, they were like, it was, she was an opera singer and it was, it was really cool because I think here, if you were to go to a restaurant in Southern California, if it was Mexican, you'd have like mariachi, Mm -hmm. a mariachi, a mariachi band, or you'd have like a jazz band or some sort of like folky singer, you know? you would never have an accordion player and an opera singer. So <laughs> that was pretty cool. The ki- the kids, especially our students from OSHA, like they were so into it because, you know, Love. they're, they're arts kids. Yeah. yeah. So that was fun. But no, we didn't really see any um, like specific cultural things. The Tour de France, um, go- which this tripped me out. We're in Florence and there's all these signs on all the roads we're going on, like Tour de France, Tour de France, Tour de France. And I'm like, what the heck? And he's like, oh, yeah, the Tour de France starts here and goes through. I'm like, in Italy? Clearly uneducated. But yeah, so right where all the places we were walking through in the big square and all the stuff, like the Tour de France will go right through there. So they were setting up for that, which was kind of cool, too, to see. Which, if it helps, Sharna, I knew nothing about that. That is new information. Yeah. I was today years old. I thought the Tour de France was just through France. Clearly not educated. And that's okay. Again, we learn things. Also, the title's a little misleading. <laughs> Tour de France and Italy. <laughs> they could just One call thing it I will Tour say de that Europe. I was really <laughs> Right? Tour to two countries. Um, one thing I was really proud of, <laughs> of our, a lot of our students was they were trying really hard to use their their phrases that they had like practiced Mm. and our tour guide in the bus every morning would like talk with them and be like, this is how you say this and say this. And he was very clear, especially in France. When you go into a store or a restaurant, use your French, even if it's the worst French ever, because the people there will see it as a sign that you're trying. Right. Okay. Most people in France speak English, especially if you are in these tourist areas and you work in a restaurant or a store and then they'll speak English to you. And that happened so many times we'd go in and we would speak very terrible French. Um, and then, then when they found out we're American, they speak English or whatever. And, and it was a really good kind of like balance. Um, but it was fun to see the kids sort of like embrace that, try to use it as much as they could. With that, that just made me think, did you find, how did you find interacting with locals, both in France and Italy? Like, how were the people, how were you welcomed? How were you addressed, et cetera? So in general, the biggest thing I saw in both places, probably more France than Italy, but only because in France, we took a lot of public transportation. We took the Metro like all the time in France. 
We are so loud. We are loud people. And Sharna, you've never been I'm a told loud that. person. You've never been told that in your whole life. But theater teenagers from Southern California? No. These French people were like, y'all better quiet Simmer down. down. I, actually, I will, I will say either they had that or they were intrigued. Oh. Like it was one of two things. It was like, you're annoying and crazy or like, wait, what? Like what? Like what? Are we on a reality know, show right they're, now? They're, they're talking. They're they're laughing. They're loud. They're you know. And these people on the train are like, uh, it's very quiet. It's very quiet on the train. So that was the first thing. The dress. I, I don't know. I. This is a whole other episode, non Europe related. I, I'm just not a fan of the way some of teen, our teenagers dress. Um, I wouldn't say it was like glaringly inappropriate or different. I think a lot of the people in France and Italy also dressed, you know, in a similar fashion to the way we do. When you go to the Vatican and when you go in Vatican City, you have to have a dress code. So we were told ahead of time, you have to have your shoulders covered and your knees covered. So our students knew even before we left the United States, you have to pack something that will cover your shoulders and your knees um, to go into Vatican City and the Vatican. And our kids were great. They followed directions. Um, but I, I didn't really see any like huge difference. I will say just in general, everybody in Europe seems, seems more like relaxed. Like, mm. I don't care what I'm wearing. I don't care what you're doing. I'm going to take a three hour lunch here at this restaurant. There's no urgency. There's no like, you know, it, it, like we are so go, 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 go as Americans. And we're so used to it. Um, that was very different. Like even the guy at the front desk of our very first hotel, just like I'm standing there waiting. I just needed an iron and he's like on the phone and then he gets off and he's like doing something on the computer and I want to be irritated. And then I'm like, You're but like, you know Hello? what? He's, he is not trying to be offensive. He is just chill. And then he's like, you know, hi, how can I help you? I'm like, wow. Okay. The, okay. Sharna, bring it down. Can I have an iron please, sir? Like they're just very, and our culture as Americans, especially Californians and Southern Californians is very, we're very charismatic. We're very loud. We're very heightened. So that was a, that was a big difference. And not for better or for worse. It's just different. Just a difference. Yeah. You know? I think some people got a kick out of us. <laughs> So I think it's funny that you talked about dress and dress code because my that was not my question, but I like that you mm. talked about it. It was just I just said, okay. "How are you addressed? Like, how did they perceive oh. you?" <laughs> I misheard the question. That's all right. Um, I loved your question though. But, I mean, your answer. But hey, I I transitioned into a whole new topic. Absolutely, we were, we were addressed well. I think when you have students traveling with you, they understand that you're on an ed you're there to learn. Right. You're not mm -hmm. just like there. I mean, there are some people, some tourists. I mean, it's, it is New York city. It is a tourist dude. You see these people with the giant selfie sticks and the thing. And it's just yeah. like, it's a lot. And if this, if that were my country, my town, my city, I lived there, I would be like, get out. Like it's, you know, you're standing in front of the Duomo in Florence and it's just, it's gorgeous and it's beautiful. And I'm like, get all the kids in front of, I want to take a picture with you, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I, I get it, but it's, it's like, it's like New York. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. It's like, that's what, kind of one of the reasons I would never want to live in New York. And I don't think LA is like that. Mm. I think LA is not as centric. Yeah. Um, LA is LA, but you can be in LA and not, it, it, there's no, what are you going to see? The Hollywood sign. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you're yeah. not like, in Times Square, like, I don't feel like LA is like that. Well, Hollywood, Walk of Fame, the Chinese theater is all, people are crazy around that area for sure. Crazy. Yeah. And you know what? I I had not been up there in years. And then I went for um, Scott Barnhart's birthday. Mm -hmm. And we did like an amazing race thing. And Lauren and I were partners. And we were like, what is happening there were so many people at yeah. Grommens. i was like oh dude you're absolutely right that's similar that's very similar like they're crazy people 
So I guess. And I, and I felt like that was Paris, Florence, Rome, all the places. The Colosseum. I could have just stood there like, what am I seeing right now? This is insane. <laughs> but the amount of humans taking 700 photos, videos, tours, there's so many tours, like so many tours. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot. It's just a lot of people. And so it takes away sort of like the serenity of it. If that, yeah. if that makes, it's just, it's sort of like yeah. a, I don't know. I got you. Like, I'm sure the stat, I've never actually, have you been to the Statue of Liberty? I have. And I was like, very to underwhelmed. the actual statue? Well, that's actually incorrect. I've not been to the statue. I've floated yeah, by so it. So I have on not the ferry. been to it. I've <laughs> seen it. I've sailed around it. And you're like, that's it. Cool. Underwhelming. I will tell you the Eiffel Tower is the opposite. It is massive and insane. And you're like, what the heck? But I imagine going to the Eiffel Tower, going to the top of the Empire State Building, Niagara Falls, places like that, I'm sure are very similar where it's just, you know, a, a like a puppy mill of people coming out, coming in, yeah. coming and do your thing, you know? It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Well, gosh, Sharna. I just myself have one more question. And then if there's anything else you want to add, my last question for you is, did, were there any mishaps? Were there any funny things that happened that were like, this is not happening to me right now, but it did happen to you right now. We had a couple, we had a couple, but honestly, traveling with 40 kids the fact that we only had a couple little mishaps like i i'm i'm super super grateful we had a it was a really really good group of kids um we had one kid not he i say lose his passport he misplaced his passport mm. for about 15 minutes when we were trying to board our flight to pisa oh no um yeah and that's so stressful he had gotten he had gotten into the airport, so he had his passport. Yeah. He, they wanted to check it again to get on the flight, and he couldn't find it. And I'm like, you have it here somewhere. Um, I had already scanned, so I'm like, I got to go in. So I left another teacher back with him. But I looked at her, and I'm like, he has to have it because he got through security. Yeah. And just It's it's here in the airport. Um, That that was the moment. He found it. It was in his bag in a different pocket somewhere. You know, you know when you're like, yes. it's not here. It's not yeah. here. That was a moment. Um. We had a student pass out on our first day at dinner. Fun. After he, we had walked all of those steps. Um, 30,000 steps. Student, honestly, kill though, the you. student, honestly, though, the student And, you know, some of these kids are not good at hydrating. They don't, mm. they don't drink water. And we kept asking them. And then, you know, it was a long day of travel before. Yeah. And they came up to us about halfway through dinner. And they were like, I don't feel good. And they were like shaking their body was shaking mm -hmm. and you know, your body does that when your muscles are like, this isn't, I need, you know, yeah. just like drink some water, go sit down. Five minutes later, the person next to him is like, ah, oh, they just passed out. So we had just to deal super with that. casual. Um, excuse me, <laughs> sir, ma'am. The human next but to me seems to be group. laying on the floor, passed out. Uh, can yeah. we get some help and, here? And fortunately they moved their food. Like afterward, we asked them, we're like, did you move your food? They're like, yeah, I felt kind of weird. So I didn't want to fall on my food. So they like move their food. And then they just like, pass out. Um, That's great. I'm glad everyone's okay. We though. had a moment on the Metro where we got separated. Oh. Like we were staying together as a group and there were, I think seven or eight kids with a teacher who couldn't get on the train we got on and they got left behind, which for a minute, everyone was like, Oh, my God. I'm like, you guys, they're just going to get on the next train. Yeah. Um, but you know, you know, things like that. Yeah. Um, we had, I was actually the first one. I will own up to it that my alarm did not go off mm. and I did not wake up and everyone was on the bus. Everyone had eaten breakfast. Everyone was ready. Everyone was literally sitting on the bus waiting for me. And <laughs> Shannon came out to my room and knocked on my door and I was like, what? what I, I went, I, I have not had that much anxiety in my body and cause I'm in charge. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> it was horrible. Shannon was great. She got me coffee. She got me a to go breakfast. And then everyone on the bus was like, good morning, sunshine. Yeah, it was cute. But yeah. we had <laughs> every day after that, we had at least one room that didn't get up on time. So we'd go knock on their door. That's and, so you know, funny. Like, but I think that's with jet lag and being, yeah extra tired Absolutely. you know um 
what else? What else? We had a kid um, on our free time, pierce his ears. That was fun. <laughs> Came back with some pierced ears. Okay. I was like, so either you text your mom or I text your mom. He's like, I'll text her. <laughs> That's um, funny. I like that. What else? We, we, our flight on the way home was delayed, which is fine. Yeah. You know, whatever delayed flight until your delayed flight then your layover becomes Correct. too fast and you are running. We literally were running these kids through the Dublin airport to make our connection running like crazy people with 40 kids. Like, you yeah, gotta know. Um, that was gnarly. Did that. And you made it. Um, what? Oh yeah, you, we made it. We're here. I'm here. Well, <laughs> um, I just meant like you didn't have to wait for another flight. Okay. We did. We made it. We made it. But yeah, it was, uh, like that seems so trivial. Like it wasn't, nothing yeah. was super, super crazy. Well, I didn't it want anything really dramatic. Really one of the fun things. Yeah. No, thank you. I mean, the passing out was probably the biggest one. Yeah. But everyone's here. Everyone's back. Everyone's alive. Everyone had a great time. Everyone learned something. And such a, I hope a great experience. It's funny because I was, I literally tonight was at a baseball party with um, Sebastian's team mm -hmm. and a lot of those moms. And I was telling them all about the trip too. And I was like, you know what? It's a really great perspective for how I don't like using the word sheltered because I don't think it, that has a negative connotation. Yeah. But how sheltered or, um, small the sphere is for so many of our kids who live in Southern California. Yeah. Um, and so some of these kids who, and, and for some of the kids who have traveled, but have traveled with their families, first class, anything they want, anywhere they want, right. any food they want. And so it was really great for kids who have never traveled and great for kids who have traveled, but their way mm -hmm. to have this experience is very educational. So I, I think it's really important for, for kids to just to see, to learn. I mean, yeah. if I have the chance to send my kids, I will in a second. Yeah. So, and well, I think it's hard for some of the parents. Some of well, these parents have such a helicopter such a grasp on mm -hmm. their own kids where I'm like, you guys, I'm not going to let something happen to your kids. They're going to be okay. They're going to be able to get up and get their breakfast. And guess what? If they oversleep, they oversleep. Guess what? If they don't We're wear their sunscreen, they get sunburned. Everyone's going to be okay. You know? So it, it was good. It was, it was a good trip for sure. Awesome. Well, I can personally say I'm so glad you're back and thank you <laughs> in one piece. Right. So yes, fully sane, I believe. Maybe a little tired, but fully sane. I mean, I'm finally caught up. I feel like I finally caught Great. up. Great. Oh gosh. Well, Sharna fans, thanks for listening to Sharna's travels, her travel yes. monologue, dialogue, whatever. That's not the word. I want to like travel journal. Maybe travel journal. Ooh. Yeah. Travel audio journal. Tra Ooh, done. Travel audio journal. Mm -hmm. Welcome. <laughs> and uh, uh, so thanks for listening like and subscribe on youtube follow us on instagram at sharna for official check out uncommonpod.com maybe get some merch and keep listening let's get another ten thousand downloads sooner than later yes on that note sharna for out out this concludes another episode of Uncommon Sense. If you're ready for more of this fresh, hilarious, and unique perspective on the world of entertainment, education, and life, be sure to subscribe right now to catch every episode. If you gasped, laughed out loud, or even snorted, share the show with your friends and aspiring entertainers, because, let's be real, sharing is caring. For more Sharnifer, tune in to their witty insights by checking out the website uncommonpod.com or connecting on social media. Tune in next week and get the real insider scoop on another episode of Uncommon Sense.